All right, I am going to start the South Etchenbach Trail today. All right, so what I did is I parked right behind the tree over here. This is the Juniper uh, Campground at Theodore Roosevelt National Park North Unit. The campground is closed during due to COVID. Uh, bathrooms are open during the day. So I just got a few hours. I'm going to go hike this. Um, I ain't going to be doing a lot. Just get my feet wet because it's already about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So hopefully you can see it, but it says that I'm here. So I'm going to be going out through the grass here to begin with. Alright, so coming from uh, the grass trail from the parking lot, not too far away, uh, you'll come to a Y. Uh, I'm following all trails, trail map, so it shows me going to the left, even though there's an old black one that shows going to the right, and it looks like they meet up the same. I uh, don't know if you can tell, but you got the Little Miss Missouri River right there. Even though you got a trail marker right there, so um, yeah, it probably just says the Little Missouri River. Actually, let's just go check it out. I'm out here by myself. I do got some hiking sticks. Uh, I'm just the only thing I'm nervous about is rattlesnakes. Because I've heard, uh, things I've heard is that you're gonna see no one out here and uh, you'll see all the wildlife and stay away from the bison and you'll see rattlesnakes. So I wanna stay away from the rattlesnakes or let them know I'm coming so then they let me know where they are and I could avoid them too, just like the bison. Alright. We're looking face dude there. Wow. That's pretty cool. So I don't know if I'm going to stay on the trail the whole time or I might just walk the uh, river uh, just because you know I'm kind of start, starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so let's see what the sign says. Oh, this is a campground. It's the canoe landing, 200 yards, so it's probably where the trail is too. All right, that's pretty cool. It's not too bad today. It's probably upper 80s. There's a slight breeze. If you can see everything moving there a little bit, so it's not too bad. All right, so what I did was instead of continuing on the trail. Uh, be honest, I, I didn't feel like changing and uh, crossing the little Missouri River. I'm just going to kind of hike down because I know you got to come back across it. So I might pick up the path uh, down the river a little bit. And then first thing tomorrow morning, tackle crossing it. Uh, there are definitely some areas that are very easy to cross. Uh, not that the along the trail was that difficult, but I honestly just didn't want to change everything. Uh, pretty cool down here. You you see a lot of the buffalo tracks. Uh, some of them are deep, some of them are fresh. So uh, yeah, just gonna continue down here. All right, I'm gonna just record this walk up. So I'm still going down the Little Missouri River and uh, kind of cutting out crossing the river paths as I already mentioned. But just hopefully this shows up in the video. I mean, I'm videoing this on a little DJI, DJI um, pocket camera, so I hope that works because it is just gorgeous. Alright, um, I'm still just following the river bed around until I meet back up on the trail. And um, there's always just tons of activity down here uh, with tracks. So that'd be really cool to come back on my way back maybe and see a herd. <laughs> Terrifying, but it'd be cool. So I wanted to throw it on the camera because just look at that picture. Just uh, the way the river bends around and just the colors of the hills just look spectacular. Alright, so now I definitely believe I am on a buffalo trail because I'm off of any kind of other trail. And what I did was I came up from the river, which is down there, which was kind of very sketchy because um, the grass 
was taller than me and I couldn't tell what I was coming up to but I do know that it's a game trail not a regular trail because of where they um, came down to the Little Missouri uh, River. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to track back on um, and I'm just following this creek which is going to wrap me around in this game trail to um, get me back closer to the actual trail I'm supposed to be on. I hate walking in this grass even though it's a big game trail. I'm being nice and loud and keeping my head up to make sure no buffalo come my way. But also too is I'm not really too far off the beaten path. The Juniper campground is right over there. The main road's right up there. So, you know, I'm not too far off the beaten path or by myself, so. Okay, so um, Juniper campground. Pretty much all that I did was just walk around down by the, oh, all that I did was walk down around the river bend oh, which is cool it was a cool hike but now i'm back and instead of taking the river crossing for the trail i'm going to start here and take the uh grasslands i think because i think once i think once you get up to there you hit the grasslands um just guessing so as you can see right here i'm at the little missouri nature trail and that turns off into the um i can never say the name the Achalachin Trail. So um, we'll keep on trucking for today. It's beautiful. It's only 340. It, it might be about uh, 85 degrees, but the breeze is nice. I'm very well protected, very well hydrated. So here we go. All right, you come down the uh, little Missouri Trail Loop uh, and Nature Trail, and so that's going to be the Nature Trail. So you come up here to keep on following. I'm going to get it right this time. Got to cheat. And look at my all trails map. The Achenbach, the Achenbach Trail. All right, so you come up here. And this is like a little service road. And you take a quick left on a service road. Yep, and you follow the service road, then you're gonna cross the scenic drive. And actually, nice little hike here. You follow the service road for a little while before you ascend that. So, here we go. We make a little, we make a little left onto the service road and get some more easy hiking going on. So you're coming, that's a scenic road right there. I don't know if the camera will catch up to that person driving. Very nice hike. Definitely lost the breeze, so it's a little warm. Oh, throwing a picture of me in the video of this. I don't really care for that too much, but. Because you're not watching this to watch me, you're watching this to see what the trail looks like. Uh, but, so just to let you know, so I am hiking boots, hiking pants, which can be uh, removed for shorts. Not that I ever do. And then I do have a long sleeve hiking shirt on, it's very breathable. I do have my poles. Uh, and I have an uh, Osprey. Backpack. I think it's a 28 liter, so it's not small, it's not big, uh, but I do have 2.5 liters of water in it. Uh, let's see, I got plenty of snacks, charging my cell phone right now. I got in my little pocket. I do have a Garmin inReach, which, if, depending on if you're a Garmin person or have Garmin's, this is right after they just got hacked by a cyber terrorist. Uh, ransomware so my inReach which I specifically bought for this trip is not really working but I kind of bought it because I'm gonna be out 
doing a lot of this trail by myself or all this trail by myself and um, if I need it I need it because a lot of videos I've seen is once you get into the deep of the trail you don't see other people now, I am not camping backpacking overnight I am actually car camping in a Tesla used Tesla and uh, I'll, I'm making a video with that just to kind of document how that goes and uh, I won't I'll, I mean there'll be a little crossover between the two but lots of lots of bison pies on the trail I'm used to calling them cow pies but they're definitely bison pies all right so I'm gonna just hike for a bit and turn it back on when we start hiking up that stuff So it joins in at the Buckhorn Trail here, uh, and I do know it goes along it a little bit, and then the Buckhorn trails off, and then the Achibok keeps on trucking. But the other cool thing about this little area, and I had this on my to-do list anyways, is this is the Cannonball Mystery Area. So I'll leave the video on for this. So let's see. Let me see if I can get this to work. So it's the Cannonball Mystery Area. Oh, this is probably killing with the wind. Sorry about that. All right, so the Cannonball Mystery Area is how these little cannonballs, sorry, how the cannonballs developed out of the uh, ground. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. And I do apologize. I uh, I forgot my mic. So you guys are probably getting all the wind on this. And that just stinks. Actually, I actually have a, my own company that I do videos for. And I don't know why I don't have the mic. Very, that stinks of me. So cool. They, they're kind of out here. All in this area. And I guess that's just the, I guess the cannonballs are just right there in the beginning. I thought they would be farther along the path, but here we go. We're on the, the Buckhorn Trail now. Lots of cow pies. Bison pies. If you're watching the video, I still have yet to come across a rattler, which is okay. I'm just, uh, it's really, well, I got the hiking sticks because you should have them when you got a backpack on with some weight just to help you out. And I also got them to make some noise ahead of me. When I can't see, there's a lot of noise making, especially when I went off the path. All right, I'm gonna see where I'm going. All right, so this is not on any one of the paths, the Buckhorn or the, uh, see, I can't see the name again, the Aschenbach, uh, but this is just a little jaunt off of it. And this is super cool. That's why I know I'm not going to finish this trail in two and a half days just because one I'm not starting to finish it really I'm just starting to kind of explore the whole area So all this is a washout But it's just super cool wait till you see this up here kind of Reminds me of I don't know Raiders of the Lost Ark or something like like mummy tunes like vertical standing mummy mummy tunes tunes back up and show it to you in a second here check those out does that look like four mummy tunes tombs one little ones like a family <laughs> and then if you go inside it's just super cool how the water has come down sorry for the wind again don't know how well you can see that Let's see if I can focus in it's just kind of Super cool. That was just my stick, not a rattler. So just super cool. And then I also I went down this little area. Didn't go lead anywhere, but well, it led places where if you were younger and dumber than like me, you'd think would be pretty cool. But so once again, it's just another washout. But it's pretty cool. Just all the greenery in here. You could definitely do some major more scamping and hiking up there. There's a little cave system back there. Yeah, I'm 
I'm just too old and chicken to check that out. Yeah, if we do it on video though, videos make you braver, right? Yeah, no. Well, let's just check it out. What the hell? Let's just look for anything living. Oh, nothing really. But just kind of cool. And then this was really just right off the path when I left the Cannonball Mystery. This was literally like the first outcove that I just saw it and just had to go check it out. That's what it's all about. If you have a goal, that's fine. I'm just not in enough shape to finish the 18 mile trek. I'd rather do little bits and explore and then come back someday. So see, that's cool. I really don't like this DJI too much. But it's probably a smooth video. Just giving you a perspective as to, if you do this hike, just how quickly this is. I do have a pretty cool other video that uh, we did in Phoenix where we definitely went off the beaten path to find a spot. I'll check that out later today and put that in the next video. So there you go. That's the road and that's the cannonball mystery. So I made it a uh, hundred yards, <laughs> but here we go. We're gonna keep on going. All right, so here's where the uh, two trails go off, the Buckhorn and the Etchapak. I'm gonna say that wrong the whole time. So the Buckhorn goes there and we're going this way. So not very well marked, but if you got the uh, all trails topographic uh, one, you'll, you'll see that it shows you gotta get on top of this little bitty plateau here, I'm gonna call it. Don't hold it against me if it's not a true plateau, okay? And there we go, we just kinda go down here. So like I said, it's not really marked. And this could definitely be one of those that they say a lot of the bison follow these trails on because, you know, it's not very well marked at all, but it does look traveled. So once again, I'm following the all trails and it showed to get up here. Let's see if I can do it with one hand on the poles and one hand on the camera. At some point later on, I'll go over the gear when I'm back at the car. Yeah, those things are real freaky too, just to let you know. Those little, if you saw that or heard that little bug. I always, just because I haven't seen one yet, I always get hesitant on coming up on top of something that I can't see because, you know, I don't want to startle a bison. All right, so I'm gonna chill in the shade for a second, get all trails out, check it out again, because it looks like the path is somewhere right around in here. Well, I'll just do it while you're on. Don't think you'll be able to see the phone. Definitely on it. So I got a very right. So once again, I would recommend topographic ones if you know how to read them. If not, watch some YouTube. I am prior military, so I know how to read them. And that's just where I'm gonna go. So you kinda always want to get you know your bearings with your map in here. And I uh, by the way, I do also have a my actually old 30-year-old army compass. As a backup, and I have a regular um, map for backup too. And more bison pies. Lots of them up here. Right, that means I'm going to keep an eye out. And I mean lots of them up here. Wow. I feel like every 10 feet or so. They're all over. I just don't know what their uh, 
feeding schedule is like. You know, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. Well, I might actually come back here tomorrow morning because there is tons of them here. Tons of pies. And then the watering hole is very fresh tracks too, so. Sorry, I heard something. Highly recommend as you're walking. One, take in the sights. But two, make sure you stop. Oh, look at this, some nice little cactus down low here. I'm gonna bring on all trails again. I think, the, I think I'm a little right of the path. Yep, definitely right of the path. See, right, right of the path. I can keep on going this way, but I got all excited about all the cow pies. All right, I'm gonna shut it off for a minute just so I keep right on the right path. And definitely, when you're walking up here, look out for cow pies and uh, cactus, low lying cactus, wear pants. Oh, look at this. I'm gonna keep it on for a second because. I got one hell of a path here coming up. This is a rut. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna walk and talk and check off trails again. Oh yeah, there we go. You can see the path clear as day. Cool. All right, be back in on a bit. All right, so one thing I'd recommend from other videos I watched and now that I'm here is, you know, so you're going to have a lot of these up and downs here on the north side of the little Missouri River. And um, so, you know, you got some nice grasslands up here. And in a lot of the other videos, I've seen people walk up and they say that they heard a buffalo run down into one of these. Because you can see, like on that other side, that's steep. A buffalo can't just walk down that. He's got to run down it. And you'll even see some scuff marks along the pass here. So... I always come up to these and I look. I stop, I listen, I look. Because this is a small one. I would really hate to be down in a bigger one and all of a sudden from either behind me or having helped me in front of me, here comes a buffalo. Um, I don't want to be surprised. So I would definitely just hesitate, stop walking, listen, look around, and then go on down. I do recommend the sticks. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm 50. I'm in okay shape. I'm not in the best shape right now, but uh, some of these descents are steep. So even when I get down here, I still come down slow and look both ways just in case you got a buffalo chilling. See, you can see here, that's a whole lot of steam from either coming down there, stopping, or I actually think this track is this way. Just the way the Oh, well, actually, you got them both sides. Got them both sides. So, yeah, they just come down here and woof, that's where they stop. Because they got a ton of fun coming your way. So, yep. Now I'm going to stop it to go. Oh, well, I'll keep it going to get up here. And there's these flying bugs that start a little. Try and get one going. They scare the crap out of me because, you know, I. I really don't want to see a rattlesnake, but, you know, so they start like a, it's not a rattle, it's more like a vibration, but it's loud and it's instant, like you startle them, like a rattler would. <laughs> so, hate those things, whoops. There we go, sorry about that. All right. Also, too, just to let you know, is I still have not had another person out here with me, but the road is right at the base of those mounds. I've I've done an eighth of this trek so far, so oh is that a fresh one? That might be a fresh one. That's a baby one. Which is scary in and of itself. Alright. We're trekking. Lost my breeze. It's getting warm. But it's cool. I mean it's cool to see. All right, so I'm gonna walk up to the trail marker up there. Um, definitely had to use all trails a lot in this. Uh, it's just barrenness. Um, well, it's got lots of tracks, lots of fresh cow pies, dung. 
they had fresh tracks too so um but the marker's right up there so i'm gonna walk up to it now and uh you know, it is five o'clock in the afternoon so maybe just still the heat of the day they don't they're either not grazing here anymore or they moved on to somewhere else so uh, you can see the path kind of gets really beaten down in this area but you can see where they have come through so i'm gonna work my way around this way So once again, this is where all trails comes to help out. Whoa. Don't ask me what caught my eye on that marker, but I found it from way down there, so. I also knew by all trails that, once again, I'm using the topographical maps, that I needed to get pretty much up right through this thing. So I knew that was there. But look, it also goes that way. So I don't know. <laughs> That's the great thing about hiking out here where you don't see another human being. So I get to the top. I scan so I'm using my sticks on the ground for any rattlers and I scan up top for bison all right so here's a trail marker and you'll, you'll see a lot of these roughs rucks ruts ruts um throughout whether there's a marker or not so i guess they rub themselves on these markers and they just have melee and muck on it um so what we got we have the cap rock coolie trailhead which is 0.4 miles so the wait till this comes around the road is literally right over there um and then we have the trailhead, 1.6 miles that way, that I guess that was a mysterious canyon one, and the prairie dog town. So I've only gone 1.6 miles. I gotta speed it up. I'm gonna go check out prairie dog town. There's another trailhead up here, so uh, a marker, so I'm gonna go ahead and walk up to that. And broken record time while I walk and talk, but I come across some super fresh, super fresh. Now, of course, I don't poke them, but I mean, it's pretty fresh. It's pretty fresh. Once again, I apologize for the microphone or lack thereof. I don't know how this thing picks up. If you like hiking, and being out in the middle of nowhere, less some cars you see every once in a while. Um, this is just fantastic. It's really just beautiful. I'll kind of just do a spin around here so you can see it. It's just gorgeous. I just really like all the different colors. You got green. You got the different decades hundreds of years centuries you know of water and stuff like that i just think it's fantastic i'm a big fan of sedona also arizona of course but i'm also the kind of person that the heat doesn't bother me so take that for what it is um i always drink plenty of water cold hurts it doesn't hurt unless you get a headache, so you better have medicine for that. All right, I gotta bring out alt trails and see where I'm going because at some point I'm supposed to make a sharp turn. I hope I wasn't back there to that little jaunt trailhead thing because that'd be a waste of time. Alt trails kind of 
not fun because it keeps on reloading every once in a while. I know you really can't see that too well, so. Yeah, so I actually got to go back to that trailhead. So I got to go back to that trailhead um, and go back around. I guess I'm not going to do Prairie Dog Town today. Come on. Yeah, it'll take me too far off. That'll be fun though. But I know I could drive to that one, so. All right, so I am uh, actually taking the road back. Uh, it took about uh, four hours of hiking. You know, I started on the south side by the river, came back over to the north side for, I'm going to call it the grasslands. And um, my feet are a little tired, so I'm just going to take the road back. Should be a lot shorter of a trip. I'm kind of just pointing this out so then you know that, at least on the north side, or up to this point, you can not take the trail back. Um, I got off at that last trail marker that I mentioned. It's actually probably just right here. And then I came around that corner. So yeah, uh, tomorrow I'll probably start at the same trailhead, take off from there, and then that'll be no road help. Um, I'll just have to either keep on going or turn around and come back, which is probably the plan. It's gonna be really difficult to see, but we have a makeshift prairie dog town, looks like. So the prairie dog's right about there. And then there's a bunch more out there. I saw everywhere there's a mound. Here's their little prairie dog home. So this is right off the road, right above the Cannonball Mystery, uh, where that was. So they're just out there chilling in the afternoon sun. So the Cannonball is right there on that little jaunt where it's sticking out there. So Juniper Campground's right across the street. And here's a little makeshift prairie dogs. These are smaller than the ones in, uh, oh, really? You're gonna yell at me, are you? He doesn't like me, I guess. The ones in South Dakota are bigger, really bigger. These are really little dudes. I doubt you could see those guys way out there standing up. Oh, there we go. Hopefully you can hear them in the wind. You probably can't. They're yelling at me or each other.